It is now time for members' statements. The member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize the hundreds of walkers, volunteers, and donors who participated in London's coldest night of the year, raising funds to support Mission Services of London. The event came at a critical time for Mission Services, which earlier this month announced significant cuts as a result of the ever-increasing funding gap between provincial dollars and the needs of some of the most vulnerable members of our community. Over the years, this gap has been filled more and more by private donors, with some vital mission services programs funded as much as 60 per cent by donations. The gap forced mission services to make the difficult decision to reduce programming at Quinton Warner House, a live-in addiction treatment facility for men, and to close 21 crash beds as of April 1st. Last year, those 21 beds accommodated almost 7,700 stays by people whose mental health and addictions challenges prevented them from accessing traditional shelter beds. Let's consider the potential costs of closing the 21 crash beds if the people who use them end up in hospital every night instead. A single visit by ambulance to the emergency department, excluding the cost of police or medical treatment, is approximately $1,100. $1,100 times 7,700 means an additional $8.4 million in hospital costs annually. Speaker, this is a clear example of the negative consequences of short-term thinking and the failure of successive Liberal and Conservative governments to adequately support those struggling with mental health and addictions. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The Member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased uh, to celebrate the induction of Bob Vesey from my riding into the 2018 Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame. For 57 years, Bob has been involved uh, as a builder for the Brooklyn Redmen. He has held multiple non-playing positions during his tenure with the Redmen, including general manager, executive member, president, and golf tournament organizer. Speaker, although the positions and accolades he has accumulated during nearly six decades of involvement are numerous, his pride rests in the championship teams that he's been part of, including 15 Ontario Lacrosse Association provincial championships, 13 Eastern Canadian championships, and Speaker, seven Man Cup National Championship teams. Bob is an integral part of, the, of building the loyal fan base of the Brooklyn Redmen and has been a great ambassador for the sport of lacrosse. Congratulations, Bob Vesey and your wife, Joan, on your well-deserved induction into the Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. It has been a very busy time in our office fielding phone calls, emails, and meeting with anxious families and professionals who believe that every child with autism deserves access to appropriate services. I have been talking with concerned parents who want their children to be able to reach their full potential, and one would think that government would want the same, but instead this government is purposefully attacking their futures to save a buck. Children who are now receiving therapy will almost certainly not be able to continue because no family that I have heard from will be able to afford the cost on their own. Capping dollars and limiting investments in our children based on age and family income is unconscionable. I have met with service providers who will not be able to responsibly transition so many children to the school system in such a short period of time. Our schools are not prepared for the influx of school-aged children who will no longer be able to afford weekly autism therapy. I met with behaviour analysts and therapists who cannot meet the needs of a child for the pathetic pittance that the government is offering. The government claims to offer choice to parents, but they eliminate the choice to have their children participate in evidence-based, individualized therapy catered to their needs and goals. Surely all children have a right to learn. To provide inadequate funding, as the new OAP does, waitlist or no waitlist, is to deny innocent children the right to an accessible education. This is heartbreaking, and what a terrible, terrible way to treat our children and autism community. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the last year, the Mississauga Food Bank recorded an 18 percent increase in the number of neighbors accessing neighborhood food banks, meal programs, and other sources of emergency food. Every day, we share sidewalks, 
grocery store aisles, and office space with these neighbors who are struggling to make ends meet. It is disheartening to see the increase of people relying on food banks. Earlier this year, I had the honor to host the Minister of Children, Community, and Social Services in my riding of Mississauga East Cooksville. The minister, myself, and some of my esteemed colleagues had the opportunity to tour the Mississauga Food Bank in my riding. I'm proud to say that we raised $5,000 and donated several crates of food during our visit. Yeah. As the MPP of Mississauga East Cooksville, I'm proud of the work the Mississauga Food Bank does for our community. I would also like to express my gratitude and thanks to the MPP and Minister from Ottawa Nepean for coming to my riding to tour the food bank and to working towards reducing poverty in our province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Today I want to speak about We Trans Support Centre in my riding and the invaluable work that they do to strengthen our trans and queer community, their families, friends, and allies. Because of the incredible support that they offer to people across Windsor-Essex, I was saddened and angry to learn that We Trans Support Centre was robbed late last week. Their donations were stolen and the office was damaged. Disturbingly, this appears to be a targeted attack in direct response to a local announcement that the pride flag would be flown at every Greater Essex County District School Board Elementary School in June. The We Trans Support Centre is resilient, and despite this attack, they are continuing to serve the community out of their downtown space, providing the services that people rely on. We Trans offers a wide range of supports for individuals, such as counselling and assistance with with filing documentation, as well as facilitating group programs such as youth drop-ins and inclusive social events. They also offer consultation services and training so that local businesses and organizations can ensure that their spaces are inclusive, supported, supportive, accessible, and respectful. The WeTrans Support Centre is a crucial part of our community in Windsor-Essex, and they continue to be a safe space for those that seek their support. I want to encourage all allies of the centre to offer their support to WeTrans as they restore their space and join me in renouncing this targeted attack. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. And, uh, Speaker, we've all heard from parents in our writings that are concerned about the new Ontario Autism Program. So I want to recap the Minister's actions so far on the new Ontario Autism Program. First, uh, she stopped admissions into the program and concealed this information from parents, and in the process, wasted valuable resources. The Minister threatened a therapist group, telling them that if they didn't support her new OAP, it would be a long four years. The Minister called parents who were expressing concern professional protesters. Aren't they simply parents who will do anything for their children because they love them? The minister has refused to release the financial details of the new program, especially the income testing. Parents should have had this from the get-go. She still hasn't released it. It's almost three weeks later. How can parents or any of us in this room have confidence and trust in the minister. Speaker, this is not a, a partisan issue. In 2016, when 2,200 families were going to fall between the cracks, members listened. We went back. We got a new, a fresh set of eyes and ears to look at it, and we corrected that problem. That's what parents deserve. That's what's needed right now. Right now, Parents need a fresh set of eyes and a fresh set of ears who will listen to them and work with them and get this right. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley North. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, January 21st, I represent government at the 2018 Lincoln M. Alexander Awards Ceremony. This award was created in 1993, commemorates the 
Legacy of the Honorable Lincoln Alexander, Ontario 24th Lieutenant Governor. This award is presented annually to three young people who have demonstrated outstanding leadership in promoting positive social changes and uh, eliminating racial discrimination. For 2018, one of the award's winners is from my writing of Don Valley North, Mrs. Lisa Wong. Congratulations. <laughs> this Lisa received one of the two high school student awards. She was pres president of the Student Council on Social Justice and Equity Committee at the uh, Mark Garnau uh, Collegiate. Mm -hmm. Lisa works hard to eliminate racial discrimination at her school by holding many initiatives to celebrate and highlight the uh, ethnic makeup of the student body. She has graduated and now attending Harvard University. She continues her role as the ambassador from Domaly North and Ontario to eliminate racial discrimination globally. Congratulations for your hard work. I wish you all the best in your future goal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements, the member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the past month, I've been on a tour of colleges and universities, and I've heard from students across this province, especially from students who are deeply, deeply concerned about the OSAP cuts and the downloading of billions of dollars of debt onto the students in this province. And many are concerned about whether they will be able to continue their studies, and many others are concerned that they will not be able to pursue the careers and the studies that they had hoped to pursue. But the biggest attack that has come from this government been, has been the attack, both verbal and practical, on student unions. We've seen in Bill 66 that this is just a precursor to a bigger attack on unions and to unionized workers across this province. They, they have not even explained, the government has not explained how the student unions are going to be able to continue to provide essential services on their campuses, such as food banks, emergency first aid response teams, student newspapers, radio stations, and clubs and safe spaces for women, uh, racialized communities, and LGBTQ communities. Those, the government and the premier should stand up in this house and he should apologize for attacking the student unions who are providing these essential services to the, to the students in this province, and he should reverse the downloading of billions of dollars of debt onto the students of this province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On January 13th, I had the pleasure of attending the Leitrim Minor Hockey Association Novice Tournament in Finley Creek. It was an incredibly fun and exciting 42-team hockey tournament that showcased some of the best young hockey talent in Carleton. I was there to watch the Leitrim Hawks A Division team narrowly beat the Metcalf Jets in the thrilling final game. Hockey is a central part of my community. It brings people of all ages and backgrounds together in the common celebration of our great Canadian pastime. At the Leitrim Minor Association Hockey Tournament, I saw my community at its very best. Residents of Osgoode, Campville and Stittsville came out in force to cheer on the A, B and C Division teams in a day of team building and fun competition. We were even pleased to welcome the Iqaluit Blizzards, who came down all the way from Nunavut and who left as the C Division champions. I saw the creation of lasting friendships and feats of perseverance on the ice. I also saw proof, Mr. Speaker, that Carleton produces the best young hockey players anywhere in the province. I might be a little biased there. I had the pleasure of talking to the kids on the Metcalf Jets A Division team before they hit the ice, and I was very impressed. I also spoke with the Leitrim team as well. I was, uh, their perseverance, teamwork and integrity was very impressive and served as a reminder that when we put our differences aside and work together, we can get more done. I hope that we can emulate these young athletes and continue to work together despite our differences to make this province the very best it can be for all Ontarians. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to take a moment and talk about uh, police auxiliary units. We've had, uh, 
Uh, on last Saturday night, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, the gala dinner that the City of Brantford Police Services Board and Police Department puts on for their police auxiliary. These young men and women, they have spots for 45 of them, but as the Chief said to me, we hire the best and so we lose the best. So they have spaces for 45 and this year, last in 2018 alone, they lost 15 members to full-time police employment. And so I just want to take up my hat off to those young men and women around the province who take time out of their personal lives, who leave their significant others and their children at home and volunteer their time to their community to be on the police auxiliary. We have them in my riding in both the uh, County of Brant with the Brant County OPP Auxiliary and also with the, um, the City of Brantford with the uh, Br Brantford City Police Auxiliary units there. They show up at Canada Day, they show up at special events, they're there to direct traffic for the Santa Claus Parade. These are the people that really just make the difference by coming and showing their support for our communities. And so on behalf of the province of Ontario, to everyone who's in an auxiliary police unit, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.